So I think it's fair to say that Marvel haven't exactly distinguished themselves when it comes to their TV shows on Disney+. Plus. Fun though it was watching them methodically destroy, degrade and humiliate characters like Wanda. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. Falcon. You've got to do better, Senator. You've got to step up. And Loki. while using them as convenient mouthpieces for THE MESSAGE. They just didn't quite hit the mark for me. Damn, I was so jaded with the whole thing that I couldn't even bother my arse to watch Hawkeye. So needless to say, I wasn't exactly brimming with excitement when they announced yet another show to add to their growing lineup. this time featuring a character I'd never heard of with vague, poorly defined powers, played by an actress I'd never seen in anything else before, whose defining motivations seemed to be that she just wanted fame and attention. Uh, okay. And now that I've seen the first trailer for the show, my biggest takeaway was, damn, this really doesn't feel like the right way to introduce a superhero. The main character came across as kind of bland and unengaging, relying mostly on her religion and skin colour to define herself. There was no mention of an antagonist or overarching threat of any kind, the art style was apparently designed to appeal to 12 year old children with ADHD, and as far as I could tell there wasn't even a compelling origin story for her. It all just felt like bright, colourful, disposable fluff without an ounce of substance behind it. But hey, never let it be said that the drinker goes into things with a closed mind. So rather than just embark on another big rant about how Ms Marvel clearly sucks and it's doomed to fail, I thought it might be interesting to break it down a little bit and offer some positive, constructive suggestions on how to do it better. Because as we all know, Marvel wants all of us to do better. So first things first, let's get the basics out of the way. As far as I could tell, for any superhero to function properly, they need four main things. 1. A compelling origin story. 2. Unique, clearly defined powers and abilities. 3. An internal struggle. 4. An external threat. For an example of all of these, let's take a quick look at Tony Stark. His origin story is that he's an arms dealer, a wealthy man and kind of a smug, narcissistic arsehole. But when he gets ambushed, captured and badly injured by terrorists armed with his own weapons, he's forced to build both an arc reactor to keep himself alive and a suit of armour to help him escape captivity. Both of these things then go on to become the core of his new identity as Iron Man. His new suit gives him immense strength and endurance, he can fly, he can shoot repulsor beams and use a selection of advanced weapons to take down his enemies. He has clearly defined powers and limitations. Unfortunately, Tony remains a deeply flawed man with flawed thinking, he's haunted by a lifetime of bad decisions and his instinctive response when he encounters a problem is to solve it through direct action, which only tends to make things worse in the long run. Taking down one enemy only attracts the attention of bigger, more dangerous opponents some of whom even learn from his achievements to create their own. Time to rid the world of weapons! You gave me the best one ever! Overall, he's a pretty well-developed, well-written hero, which is probably why he's so popular even today. Now, let's consider Ms. Marvel. Well, I think the first thing we need to do is understand what the hell Ms. Marvel is and where she comes from, so bear with me for a minute as I take you on a short journey into the madness of Marvel Comics. So as far as I can tell, Ms. Marvel is a kind of umbrella identity that's been used by several different characters over the years. The first one was Carol Danvers, who inherited their powers from the original Captain Marvel, which was actually a Cree hero named Marvel. But then he died, so Danvers just kind of stole his name. Ray Skywalker style, and the title of Ms. Marvel passed on to Sharon Ventura. Then she turned into a female version of the thing and joined the Fantastic Four. Because yeah, sure, why not? Then the title passed on to a villain named Carla Sofen, before finally winding up with Kamala Khan, a teenage girl from New Jersey. Great, so it's like a fourth-handed title given out to a complete nobody like some kind of half-arsed consolation prize. But okay, fine, let's work with it. So what's Kamala's origin story in the trailer? Well, apparently she's a high school student that struggles to fit in, doesn't know what she wants to do with her life, lusts after boys that are out of her league, and spends most of her time daydreaming about being a superhero. Fair enough, but why does she do this? Well, because it'll make her popular and accepted and give her the boy of her dreams. Not a great plan. 
Now, her general situation is roughly comparable to Steve Rogers, who was a nobody that had been overlooked by the rest of the world but dreamed of being something more. The difference here is that Steve's ambitions were born out of a desire to help people, serve his country and make a difference to the world. He didn't volunteer to become Captain America so he could become powerful, desirable and famous. He did it because it was the only way he could fight for what he believed in. But with Kamala, there's no real higher goal or desperate situation forcing her to pull herself up to be something better. Her origin is one of envy, jealousy, avarice and self-serving ambition. Just fame for fame's sake. It's the same kind of mentality that makes millions of vacuous, untalented kids flock to TikTok. Or even worse, YouTube. Oh! All desperately trying to catch that wave of fame and success. Because the terrifying prospect that their lives might not be anything particularly special is like sunlight to a fucking ginger person. It's not like she's even getting bullied or harassed at school to give more context to this. That would at least have given her some kind of motivation to escape to something better. But her life already seems perfectly fine. She has a reasonable group of friends, decent social skills, and she even gets invited to house parties. I mean, probably the worst thing that happens to her is that some random girl pronounces her name wrong. Kamala. Kamala. Damn man, you should try going to school in Scotland. If there wasn't at least one stab in a day, we considered it an epic win. And any teacher that dressed like this wouldn't have lasted five minutes. So what about her powers? Well, she seems to inherit them by putting on a magical bangle that she finds in her attic. And well, that's it, she's a superhero now. She didn't have to lose anything in return for these powers, and she didn't have to suffer or strive to attain them. She just puts on the bracelet and there it is. Now she can do stuff. But what exactly can she do? Well, based on the trailer, she can make energy shields to walk on air and protect her from gunfire, project blasts from her bracelets, and turn her fists into giant fists for some reason. I mean, that's a bit different, I guess, but it does make me wonder how useful it would actually be in most situations, not to mention how fucking ridiculous it would look on screen. Notice how the trailer is extremely light on details like that. Generally though, in terms of her powers and abilities, she seems more like a discount Captain Marvel with a touch of Mr. Fantastic thrown in. Damn, even her outfit's just like Captain Marvel with a skirt. Actually, now that I think about it, how does she even know who Captain Marvel is? I mean, her existence was kept secret until the events of Endgame, and even then she only showed up for like two minutes in the final battle before, you know. Nah, who cares, these are just details. So that's her origin and her powers taken care of, but what about internal conflicts? What's Kamala wrestling with deep down? What's her biggest fear, weakness, insecurity or flaw that really defines who she is as a person? Well... It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. Ugh. Kamala's conflict isn't about who she is, it's what she is. It's the identity that she was born into. She's insecure because people like her don't typically get to be superheroes. No shit, neither do drunken Scottish guys in their late 30s with deep-seated regrets about how they've wasted their lives. But you know what I do? I cope with it. My way. <laughs> But the point I'm making here is that this isn't a particularly compelling conflict for a character to have because there isn't really a conflict in the first place. All there is is insecurity. And it's a shame because the foundation of an interesting idea is right there in front of you. Like, imagine if her religion expressly forbids her from using her powers to help others, forcing her to make the difficult decision about whether to stick with her cultural tradition or go against it and do what she knows to be right. Maybe she'd have to sacrifice her family's love and acceptance to serve a higher calling. You know, the kind of self-sacrifice that heroes are known for? That would make for a pretty interesting internal conflict, giving us a real insight into the kind of person that she is. But nah, this stuff is nothing but incidental detail. It could be anything really, because it's not relevant to the story. It generates no particular conflict, so it offers no real storytelling potential. And I can't say I'm surprised on this one, to be honest. There seems to be a real trend with female superheroes, especially Marvel ones, not of overcoming their failings and striving to become better people through hardship and sacrifice, but but rather of letting go of their insecurities and accepting themselves for who they are. Basically, they're already awesome and all they need to do is realise it. Not a great plan. And it's the same with the external threats for Ms. Marvel. Ideally, a superhero should have a worthy villain that acts as a kind of mirror image of themselves, someone that can challenge and test them in some way, maybe offer an opposing worldview to their own. Ideally, a villain should be just as dangerous, capable and memorable as the hero, because when you get right down to it, 
A hero is only as strong as the villain that they overcome. But here, there's nothing much, apart from some vague implication that the government might be after her. Oh no, a bunch of regular old humans with guns. What a terrifying challenge for a superhero. All this stuff does is highlight what a wasted opportunity this trailer feels like, and how it was basically the exact wrong way to introduce a new hero. It doesn't achieve any of the four major objectives for a superhero story, and instead of getting me pumped up with anticipation for a compelling new idea, it leaves me feeling even less interested interested in Ms. Marvel than I was before. I mean, don't get me wrong, the show itself might turn out to be the best thing ever made. I don't fucking know, and I don't have a crystal ball for stuff like this. But if the whole point of a trailer is to sell you on a new movie or show, then I guess I'm not entirely clear on what the point of Ms. Marvel even is. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.